Welcome friends to the Touch Art Channel. Today we will get acquainted with the biography of the French artist Nicolas Poussin. The founder of the classicism style, he is considered one of the most significant masters, the influence of whose work cannot be overestimated. Most of his works are associated with mythological and biblical subjects. A lot of interesting things await us ahead, let's go. Nicolas Poussin, Niccolo Poussino, was born in 1594 in the north of France, in Les Andelys, in Normandy. The exact date of his birth has not been established. Information about the family of the future genius and his early years is very scarce. His father, Jean, a descendant of a notary family and a veteran of the army of King Henry IV, was from Soissons. Mom, Marie de Lesman, came from a wealthy peasant family and was illiterate. There is no evidence left of the son's relationship with his parents. In any case, having left for Italy, he completely broke all ties with his small homeland and called his relatives rude and ignorant. Nicolas Poussin was educated at the Jesuit Latin School in Rouen. The young man loved to draw to such an extent that he covered all his school notebooks with images of imaginary people, to the great displeasure of his parents. Poussin received his first painting lessons in Rouen from the traveling artist Nouvelle Jibinet. Further, the drawings of the young Poussin apparently attracted the attention of Quentin Barron, who was then working in Andely on a church order. Around 1610, Nicolas Poussin became his student, and his subsequent work shows a certain influence of Varenne, in particular, attention to subject matter, accurate rendering of facial expression, delicacy of draperies and the desire to use subtle and at the same time rich color combinations. His parents did not want a career as a painter for their son, and at the age of 18, Nicola ran away from his father's house to Paris. Creative life in the capital was in full swing, art flourished, but becoming one of our own in the closed guild of painters and sculptors was very difficult. At the same time, the art market was on the rise, both due to orders from Queen Marie de Medici, who wanted to decorate capital and country residences, and at the request of wealthy Parisian merchants. In addition, provincial churches and monasteries that suffered from religious wars also needed restoration and restoration. However, getting into a closed corporation of artists and sculptors was very difficult for a provincial. The young Poussin spent about three months in the workshop of the Fleming Ferdinand Van El, who specialized in portrait painting, but parted with him, since the portrait genre was of little interest to the artist. Then he went on to study with the historical painter Georges Lalmand, but also did not get along with him. In addition, Poussin expected to be deeply involved in drawing, and Lalmand's lack of attention to the accuracy of the reproduction of figures did not suit his apprentice. Nicola, who had a strong personality, did not accept the studio system, Throughout his creative life he wrote slowly and carefully, preferring to work alone. Nicola Poussin faced significant debts in Paris that he could not pay, the capital's artists were not too tolerant of outsiders, fighting them, including through fines and lawsuits. As a result, he returned to his parents' house and again joined Varin. Together, they returned to Paris in 1616. While studying in Paris, Nicola quickly realized that here, in fact, he had only one source of inspiration available to him, the Louvre. One of the important events for him was his acquaintance with Alexander Courtois, valet to the Dowager Queen Marie de Medici, keeper of the Royal Art Collections and Library. Alexander Courtois owned a collection of engravings from paintings by the Italians Raphael and Giulio Romano, which delighted Poussin. Nicola got the opportunity to visit the Louvre and copy paintings by artists there. In the royal collection, Poussin was able to become acquainted with ancient art for the first time. Poussin's first Parisian patron was Chevalier Henri Avis from Poitou, who introduced the artist into the court environment. 
Poussin got the opportunity to work in a hospital and study anatomy. However, Ava soon took Poussin to his estate, where he ordered him to decorate the interiors, but Nicola did not have a good relationship with the Chevalier's mother. He left Poitou, and in order to pay the contractual penalty, he executed several landscapes for the Chateau de Clisson in the Lower Loire. Images of Saints Francis and Charles Borromeo for the Capuchin Church in Blois, as well as a bacchanalia for the Count of Chiverny in the same city. All these paintings have been lost. The hard work led to an illness from which Poussin recovered for almost a year. During this time, he lived in his native place and tried to paint as much as he could, his brush was the landscape painting in Huguenot's house in Grand Andely above the fireplace. At that time, Rome was rightfully considered the center of the creative world. Poussin strives to go to Italy to study ancient and Renaissance art, and in 1618 he goes to Rome, but only gets to Florence, the reason was a lack of funds and the inability to earn money. In Florence, Poussin's creative formation was greatly influenced by the monuments of the Quattrocento, and the fact that he arrived in Florence earlier than in Venice and Rome was of great importance for his creative development. In search of work, he wandered around the province and spent some time in Dijon. After Florence, the artist settled at Lansky College and made a lot of effort to master chiaroscuro, perspective and symmetry. Poussin was greatly influenced by the works of Franz Porbus, Toussaint Dubreuil and Primaticcio. Without accepting mannerism, Poussin found in all these artists a range of classical subjects and themes that was close to him. Together with other artists, Poussin received several minor orders for the decoration of the Luxembourg Palace. In 1622, Poussin again tried to go to Rome, but was arrested in Lyon for debt. A serious order helped him pay off. The Paris Jesuit College commissioned Poussin and other artists to paint six large paintings based on scenes from the lives of Saint Ignatius of Loyola and Saint Francis Xavier, the latter was canonized. These paintings, executed in a La de Trompe technique and were completed in just six days, indicate both his reputation and his painterly skill. In Lyon, the artist received a commission for the altarpiece of the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, the Assumption of the Virgin Mary, commissioned by the Parisian Archbishop de Gandhi, who was depicted as a donor, also testifying to his skill and authority in French art of that time. It can be called the most significant work of Nicolas Pousset. This is the first of the surviving large paintings by Poussin, executed before leaving for Italy. At that time, Nicolas Poussin created works on subjects from mythology, studied the works of da Vinci and Durer, and was fond of poetry. His work of that period was greatly influenced by the sculptures, paintings, and graphics of Titian, Karachi, and Raphael. Poussin's work attracted the attention of the Italian poet Cavalier Marino, who lived in France. His patronage allowed the 30-year-old artist to work and develop calmly. At Marino's house, Poussin had full access to the library, which contained treatises by Leon Battista Alberti and Durer, as well as some manuscripts and drawings by Leonardo da Vinci. Poussin performed several illustrations for Marino's poem Adonis, preserved in the Roman library of Cardinal Massimi. In his early works on ancient subjects, Poussin decisively broke with the established tradition of depicting dramatic scenes in theatrical settings and avoided 17th-century costumes with complex headdresses, necklines, and lace. An analysis of Poussin's early graphics indicates that he developed a new, deeply individual style back in the Parisian period, which was not very favorable for his development. Cavalier Marino returned to Italy in April 1623. Apparently, he was sincerely interested in the artist's work and summoned him to the papal court. We invite you to get acquainted with the flowering of the great artist's creativity in our new video.
If you like the pictures, the video format and would like to see a continuation, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. Thank you for watching.